uh, like your folder list in Outlook. Here's commands and here's a scroll bar that goes up and, up and down. And I felt really clearly that that was going to be a bad thing, that we wouldn't be forced to solve it. Whereas a, horizon a horizontal thing at the top, there's no clear way to scale that. And so we'd have to work on the design of it more and end up with something that didn't make you scroll all the time. So that's why we didn't end up doing it on the side at the time. So now we've decided to do the thing at the top. Well, how do we make each tab scale? Right? Because that's an issue that we have. How do we make it enough room for stuff? So this was a simple idea called slidey tabs. And this was an idea before groups. You can see it's like you don't have any groups. And what you have are sort of big groups. So here are my picture tools. And then I click here, and this tab sort of slides over to show the next set of stuff. And then I could click here, and this sort of moves across to show the different tabs. That was slidey tabs. Not super exciting, and we didn't end up going with that. Another thing that we looked at in terms of scaling was something that we called a dialogette. Um, very similar to Nicorette, the gum, but not. So the idea here was a bunch of commands have tildes after them. And we thought at the time tilde could be used like ellipses is used to show that something goes to a dialog box. Tilde could be used to show you this is going to bring up a piece of pop-up UI. So here's a command that says nudge, but nudge isn't actually a command. It's a launcher to a dialogette. And I would click it, and then it would bring up the little commands sort of in place above it. And so I could use, you know, nudge up, nudge up, nudge up, nudge up. And then when I clicked away, it would go away. So that was the idea behind dialogue ads. Ducky labels. So this was in trying to shrink the ribbon down. And it was to say, maybe you could get rid of group labels altogether and instead just sort of overlay them over the different parts of the ribbon. And this would also help to sort of enforce the hierarchy of it. And as I move my mouse up here, whoop, they would duck out of the way to expose the stuff that was underneath it. Um, it's kind of cool. We had a good prototype of this, but people were kind of confused by it. Um, so we didn't end up going with that one either. And finally, um, of this set of prototypes, the Sizzler. And the Sizzler is one of the weirdest prototypes we ever had. It's also the only one that we ever had that had a branding uh, part of it. And the idea here was maybe on all of the, because so much of Office is about formatting. So the idea was maybe every time that you have formatting available, you have this one button that says Sizzle. And if you clicked the Sizzler, then it would take over your whole screen and show you lots of different options for how things could look. So this picture could you know, have a soft shadow, or it could be colorized, and you chose sort of the tools that would go along with each of these. And you could say, I want more like this one, or I want less like this one. Um, and then when it's done, I could click OK, perfect, and I'd be done with it. So that was the sizzler. We didn't end up going with that, but it had some, it had some interesting uh, connotations. So then finally, after we came up with all the weird prototypes, we had to figure out which of them were good. And so that's the evaluation stage. We had so many ways of evaluating the software. We had 3 million beta users. We have the mean stuff people write on blogs. We've got the pleasant stuff people write on blogs. We have paper prototypes, longitudinal usability. We have a thing called the Truman Show, where like, one guy volunteered to let us put like eight cameras around him as he worked like, for a month. And he would like, you know, we watched him at all times. We could always tune into the web feed of what he was doing with Office. Um, so we had a lot of different ways to, to collect information. One of the most useful for us was longitudinal usability. And by longitudinal usability, I mean testing people over a number of months. We found out that people's experience using, especially something like Office that they had some familiarity with, using it in the lab for the first two hours doesn't tell you very much about how well your UI is working. It basically only tells you how well it works for the first two hours. You really needed to see how people reacted in week one, in week three, in month one, in month three. And that's what longitudinal usability gave us. People that used early builds of the product for months gave us our feedback, and we were able to make a ton of changes based on that. So the single hardest thing that we had to do, I would say, in terms of evaluation, was evaluating feature organization. Now, there are a lot of commands in Office as you've seen, and trying to figure out how to map all of the 1,000 or 1,500 commands into a new UI was a very daunting task, and it drove some people mad. The first idea we had was writing them all on index cards. This is before we knew there were 1,500 of them, and getting like a conference room and like sort of spreading them out, like which ones sort of made sense. And quickly we realized we didn't have a big enough room um, on Microsoft campus to do that, and so we had to find other ways. But it's a very tricky thing because you can come up with something that works really well for one person and it doesn't work well for another person. 
Um, and so we spent so much time refining and refining and refining feature organization from the very beginning to the very end. Um, in fact, I was just sitting in my hotel room last night. My wife was sitting across from me using her laptop. She's like, where is freeze panes in Excel? I'm like, well, where do you think it is? It's on the view tab. She's like, why is it a view thing? Like, well, 93% of users believe it should be on the view tab. It's <laughs> like, what well, doesn't belong on the view tab? Like, well, where do you think it should go? Well, I don't know, but not on the view tab. So we have a lot of different ways of evaluating feature organization. Um, we looked at things like feature affinity research, which is how do people use sets of things together. We do card sorts, and I'll show you the, the card sort thing that we use in a second. We look at command loops, which is if you have two commands that you use over and over again, and they're on different tabs, every time it requires an extra click to switch tabs. Like, use this one, switch tab, use this one, switch tab, use this one. So you have to get the command loops eliminated. Um, and the other tricky thing is you always have to get fresh eyes on the product. After you've used something for a couple of months, you're worthless because you already know how it works. And in fact, your beta users are worthless too because they're the same people who now know how it works. So you constantly have to get new people to look at stuff. One of the things we fought early on inside the organization was the sense, like the word team is like, but our commands are already ideally organized. Like, they're already great. I don't understand why you would want to reorganize them. Everyone knows where they are. Um, and so this was a, a slide that I showed them back in 2003. It's called The Myth of Ideal Organization. Game show. And so what I asked them was, I'm going to show you nine features in Word. Tell me what they all have in common. So getting the word count, turning on speech and controlling that, creating a SharePoint document workspace, printing envelopes, opening the Visual Basic Editor to do coding, turning on hyphenation, merging documents together, starting web conferencing, tweaking autocorrect and IntelliSense settings. Well, what do all of these things have in common? Does anyone want to guess? They're all on the Word 2003 tools menu. So much for ideal organization. What do those things have in common? Pretty much only that they're on the tools menu. So the, the thing that we used instead of index cards to find out where pe how people thought things should be organized was a tool that we called Sortit. And every time people would come into the usability lab uh, for years, the first thing we'd have them do is use this tool called Sortit. And Sortit is a, is a web tool that has a bunch of commands on the left side. So these are all the commands in, in Word, and you'd go through them one, one by one. It would tell you what the command does, like background, change the background color. And then here's a possible organization. In this case, we were testing the Word 2003 menus. And then it would create an organization as you'd go. So this was designed when we were doing the Word 2003 menus just to see how well were people able to predict the existing menu structure. Like how well did people really know the, the menu structure? As we, went, as we went on, we introduced additional, you know, additional organizations like here's one set of tabs, which things work and which things don't. It turns out that most things have pretty good affinity. There are a few commands that were problematic the entire way through. Um, uh, headers and footers. 50% of people believe it's an insert thing, and 50% of people tend to think it's a property of the page. And uh, you can duplicate it in both places. That creates confusion, because it's like, I know this thing used to be on the tab next to you know, header, and now it's not there. So there are a couple of tough ones where you just had to make choices. Um, but overall, you, know, you, could, you could learn some pretty interesting things. Another super interesting thing for us was eye tracking. So this isn't actually like you strap on a huge helmet or anything. It actually turns out if you come into our usability labs, our monitors can watch you. I don't know how that works. I think it involves a lot of expense. But just <laughs> sitting there, it's like watching your retinas. And it's actually very interesting, because where people look is oftentimes more interesting than where their mouse cursor goes. It helps us to understand the Japanese users look at things different than American users, right to left languages. And there are two kinds of, of eye tracking we did. So heat map is designed to show overall on the UI where do people look the most. Um, so it's sort of hot where people look the most, and you can see the little, the little green spots where they haven't looked as, mu looked as much. Then gaze tracking, which is sort of a blue line that shoots around, and you get bigger circles when someone stops in one place for a while, like this one here that you see. And then it shows you directionally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This was someone that was looking at for the bold button and doing quite well at it. Um, suffice to say, 
people don't